الحمد للہ و صلی اللہ و سلم علی نبی محمد و علی علی و صحبہ و سلم اما بعد When is bathing or ghusl necessary in Islam? Number one, it is necessary when there is semen emitted from the body regardless of whether it takes place during wakefulness or sleep. So regardless of whether a person has a wet dream or a person intentionally ejaculates either through akramakum Allah, masturbation or... Uh, otherwise or just thinking so when semen is emitted from the body regardless of whether it's a male or a female as was came in the hadith uh, when uh, Um Salama uh, when Imra'ata Abi Talha she asked uh, about making a ghusl for a woman if she uh, you know has the release of vaginal fluid and the Prophet Sallallahu said إِذَا رَأَتَ الْمَا he called a نَعْم إِذَا رَأَتَ الْمَا so then the Prophet ﷺ responded that, that if the woman sees sexual discharge or discharge vaginal fluid, she should also make ghusl. So first and foremost, regardless of whether it's a wet dream, regardless of whether it's uh, being awake and, and fluids, uh, semen is released, or from masturbation, these things require a person to make ghusl in Islam. Uh, also, if a person has relations, uh, sexual relations, even if ejaculation does not take place, then in this situation, a person uh, is required to make ghusl. As the Prophet ﷺ said, either jalasa bayna shu'bayha al-arba fakad wajib al-ghusl, or kama qala Nabi Wasallam that if a person, uh, if a man sits between the uh, four parts uh, of a woman, then he and as sexual relations with her, it becomes incumbent upon him to perform the ghusl. And so, sexual relations is also a time when it's necessary to make a ghusl, or the purification, the major purification. Also, the third time is when the uh, when a woman ends her premenstrual bleeding or postpartum uh, bleeding. So, after a woman's menstruation, after she's had her period, and it's time for her to purify herself before she can pray. She must make ghusl. And also, if a woman has had childbirth at the end of her uh, at the end of her bleeding cycle, then she should also perform ghusl before she begins to pray. Uh, the scholars differ over this this uh, the fourth situation, and this is when a person becomes a new. Muslim, after they have left disbelief and come to belief, whether they should take a ghusl or not. So many of the scholars mention that uh, a person should make ghusl, and this is based upon the hadith of uh, Qais bin Asim, who said, I went to the Prophet Wasallam desiring to embrace Islam, and he commanded me to perform the ghusl with water and lot leaves. And this hadith is Hassan. Uh, those are just some of the uh, times when it is legislated for a Muslim to make ghusl. Now we get to something very important. What are the pillars and sunan of ghusl? The pillars of ghusl is first and foremost the niyyah, that a person must have intention for any and all acts of worship, as the Prophet Sallallahu said, in ma'amala bin niyyat, that actions are certainly tied to the, uh, to the uh, in accordance with the intentions. So the first thing is a person has to have niyyah, they have to have intention. And the second pillar is that they have to wash all of the body. Some of the scholars mention, and this comes from a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ as well, they mention that a person must make istinshaq, you know, they must uh, t clean their nose and their mouth. Uh, so the scholars differ over this, and to avoid the differences of opinion, in regarding this issue, it is best to make the to wash one's mouth and to clean one's nose. But the the minimal uh, pillars of ghusl, meaning that you are have performed the ghusl for the prayer, if you need to make the ceremonial, the major ceremonial uh, purification, which is ghusl, washing yourself, is you have to have intention and you have to wash all of the body with water. So. The scholars that hold that view 
will say that, for example, all you have to do is make your intention, and if you jumped into a lake with the intention, then that will be sufficient for your ghusl. You jumped into the lake with the intention to perform a ghusl, you jumped in and you came out, that you would be able to pray, according to that opinion. The other opinion is that if you did that, you would make your intention, you jump in the lake, and you would clean out your nose and your mouth. So that is the safest way. Going to the sunnan of the ghuzl, that means these are the recommended things of the ghuzl, is that a person, it is recommended, and they, you will get extra reward, and your ghuzl will be akmal, and it will be more perfect, and going beyond, but this is not an obligation, meaning to wash the hands three times, washing the private parts, performing a complete wudu like that of the prayer, and it is permissible to delay washing the feet until one has completed the ghusl. Also, water is poured over the head three times while running the fingers through the hair so that the water reaches the roots, and water is poured over the whole body beginning with the right side, then the left. Those are the sunnan. Those are the things which uh, are a person will receive extra reward and they do not have to do to complete the ghusl. The complete ghusl, according to the sharia, that a person must do is make intention and uh, water should touch all of their body. That is the minimal. That is the minimal. And according to some scholars, the minimal is making the intention, making sure water touches all the body, and cleaning out the nose and the mouth uh, at least one time. Not necessarily three times, and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil, and bless us with al-nafi, rizq, and tayyibah, wa amil al-muttaqabili, wa sallallahu wa sallam, ala nabiyyina Muhammad.